page that we were at. So again, what you can see here from a traditional page request is that we had to wait. We would send a request and we had to wait for the response. In addition, it wasn't just a small bit of uh, information that was sent back to us. It was typically an entire web page. Now, before we had Ajax to break this up a little bit, we did have other technologies which helped. Those included plugins, um, iframes, and some other technologies. But what we'll start to see is that Ajax enables us to break up this synchronous page request in uh, a much more um, robust manner. So let's look at Ajax. This is a typical Ajax request. Now the request starts in the same way as our synchronous page request. User is going to request a web page uh, that gets sent to the web server and an entire HTML document is sent back. But now let's say there's different components on this page. Maybe there's a stock ticker widget and there's also a weather uh, widget or something like that. And uh, the stock ticker needs to update itself so that the price is accurate. This can either happen through a user interaction, perhaps the user clicks on a button that says update now, or maybe it happens programmatically. After a certain duration passes, the widget itself makes a request to the web server to get some more information. So what we start to see here is that when that stock ticker uh, is being updated, that we're, we don't just stop all other activity. We're, we are able to still continue to do other things on the web page. Maybe fill out a form, maybe navigate through another widget. Doesn't matter. What's happening here, the important thing with Ajax, is that now we have the ability to continue to work on the web page while that request has been sent out. And eventually, a response is received from, uh, by the web browser. And typically, this is not going to be an entire HTML document. Um, usually, it's what it's going to be is a small bit of markup, or maybe even no markup at all, just the data that we need. And the browser will then take that information and repaint just the specific area that needs to be updated. So that's the basic flow of AJAX. So what is AJAX? AJAX. Uh, some will argue doesn't stand for anything, but if we were to turn into an acronym and what people generally say the acronym stands for is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And really that does a pretty good job of explaining the components of Ajax. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. There are three primary technologies that make up Ajax. First is an XML HTTP request object. And the best way to think about this object is that it's the heavy lifter for us. It's what's really doing all the requests for uh, creating a request, sending off that request, and when a response finally comes back, receiving that response and updating the page. So we'll look at a little bit of code in just a little bit um, to see what that looks like. And of course, JavaScript. So JavaScript is going to be the client-side scripting technology that we'll use to create and manipulate both the XML HTTP request and the third part, the DOM. So the JavaScript will manipulate the DOM as well. The DOM is the document object model. And the best way to think about the DOM is it's just a tree representation of all of the elements that make up our web page. So uh, what that enables us to do is to manipulate very specific parts of the web page without upsetting uh, the entire web page. So those are the basic technologies that make up the umbrella of AJAX. AJAX is not a single technology, it's a collection of different technologies that work in concert together to produce this asynchronous request and response effect. So if we wanted to create this flow, here's basically what we would do with these technologies. First of all, we'll want to use JavaScript to create our callback function. Now there's nothing special about a callback function that separates it from any other JavaScript function. There's no special keyword that's used or reserved words. Basically it's just a JavaScript function that is going to be called as soon as the response um, comes back. And obviously what we're going to want to do with that callback is then change something on our existing web page. So you create the callback function. What, what's going to happen once the response comes back? Next, you will want to create an XML HTTP request object for the request. And so when you do that, we'll create our object, we'll register the callback function that we made in the previous step, 
and then we'll send it off to the server and that's how the request is sent off and once the response comes back um, it will call into our callback function once that callback function is called um, what's going to happen is it will say hey some things have happened and it will change the ready state of the request object so the ready state is just a way of saying hey what's going on right now what's happening with this request have you been initialized have you been sent has the complete response come back including all the headers and the bodies where are you at so that's what our ready state is for our request object and any time that ready state changes on the request object our callback function will be called so we can handle different types of activity depending on what's going on with our request object so what we'll start to see is that the ready state is represented by an integer and one of the integers will uh, say the number four will tell us that we're all done the request has been sent the complete response has been received. You're ready to update your page through the DOM. So here's what that looks like in code. You'll see two functions here. Uh, the top function, update stock price request, is what we're going to use to create our request and send it off. The bottom function, update stock price, is what we're going to use every time the ready state changes. That'll be our callback function. So let's actually jump to the bottom part first and take a look at this. The update stock price, the first thing that we're checking here is to say, um, what's the ready state? If the ready state is 4, remember that I said ready states are represented by integers. So if it's a 4, that means it's done. The request has been initialized, it's been sent off. Some of the, not just some of the responses received, but all of the response has been received. So we check and make sure that our ready state is 4 before continuing. Next, we check to see what the status is. And this status is another property on the request object, which is simply the HTTP response code. So you can look up what uh, the different response codes are and how you want to handle them. But 200 simply means everything was OK. The resource that you requested, we understood the request on the server. We were able to find your resource, and we were able to send something back. So 200 means everything's OK. So once we've gone through these two checks, we've received the complete reply and everything looks okay, then we do something with the DOM to update our page with the information received. And what we're doing here is we're finding a particular element. Let's just pretend it's a div, something, something on the page that's called stock price. And we change that HTML with the HTML that was sent back uh, with the response. So that's our callback function.